Welcome back to Ralph's Sort of True Stories. We've been telling Irish stories, and we're going to do another segment on that. You know, one the evening, uh, Murphy and Casey and Michael and Sean and Seamus, all good Irish lads, were playing poker. And as the evening wore on, Michael ended up losing $500. And he says to the lads, he says, you know, I can't go home. I can't go home and tell Mary I've lost $500. You know, we've got six kids at home. You know, we got to put a meal on the table. Oh, no, she'll kill me. She'll kill me. I can't go home. I can't go home. Well, he starts worrying about it so much and fretting that right there at the table, he does have a heart attack and he falls over dead. Dead in a donia. They check his pulse. They do everything. And so they're saying, well, how are we going to explain this to his wife, Mary? And so Sean says, well, I'll go tell her. And they say, well, Sean, you're the least diplomatic one of the bunch. You can't go figure out how to tell Mary her husband's dead. Oh, he says, I'll, I'll take care of it. So he goes up and he rings the doorbell and Mary answers. He says, Mary, I want you to tell you that Michael was playing poker and he's lost $500 and he's scared to come home. And Mary says, well, why don't you just go back there and tell my husband to drop dead? He says, okay, I'll go tell him. So I guess maybe Sean's got a little more wild to him than, than what we were thinking. Oh, and I have another bit of a sad story to relate. You see, Murphy worked down at the Guinness factory where they made this Guinness in these gigantic vats. Lovely stuff, lovely stuff. Well, one day, his friend Casey has to go up and ring the doorbell at his buddy's house. And the wife, Maggie, answers the door. And Casey says, ah, Maggie, he says, I've got the bad news for you. I got the bad news. Your husband, Murphy, he died down at the Guinness factory. Oh, tell me, tell me, what happened? Well, he fell into this big vat of Guinness and he drowned. Oh, oh, at least tell me that he didn't suffer. Oh, no, I don't think so. He got out three times to take a piss. So another sad story. See, two here, two, two Irishmen have died already. So in this next story, nobody's going to die. And this is a true story, a true story. This is about the Murphy brothers. You know, the Murphy twins. Well, they go into this bakery, and they were always competing with one another. Well, I'll just call them twin number one and twin number two. Well, twin number one says to his, watch this, reaches up and he grabs three cookies, lightning fast, and puts them in his pocket while the baker had his back turned. So he says to his brother, you see that? You see how lightning fast I am? He said, you could never top that. He says, well, you may be fast, but I'm the wily one, you know. And he says, Mr. Baker, Mr. Baker, could I have your attention? He said, would you like to see a magic trick? He says, well, yeah, I'd like to see a magic trick. He says, give me one of those cookies. He gave him the cookie and he ate it. He says, now give me a second cookie. He gave him the second cookie and he ate it. Well, give me a third cookie. And the baker says, wait a minute, what's going on? You're not showing him any magic tricks. You're just eating all the cookies. He said, I promise the magic trick right after this cookie. So he gives him the third cookie and he eats it. He says, now you want the magic trick? He says, yeah. He said, go look in my brother's pocket. You'll find the three cookies. So <laughs> I guess twin number two was a bit of the wily one. Now these same twins, twin number two was thinking about getting married. But he told his brother, he says, you know, Murph, he says, it's very important to me that I, that I marry a virgin. But I have no way of knowing. She says she's a virgin, but how am I to know she's a virgin until, you know, after I marry her and then it turns out she's not a virgin. I'm already stuck because in the Catholic Church, I can't get a divorce. So he says, oh, brother, he says, I'll tell you what you do. Next time you're with her, before you go, I want you to paint one of your testicles red and one of your testicles blue. And when you're with her, all of a sudden you just drop your trousers, drop your underwear, and if she says something like, well, that's the strangest pair of balls I've ever seen, you'll know she's not a virgin and you dump her. <laughs> I guess that's one way to find out. Now, you know, the Irish and the Scottish are separate groups but they have a lot in common and they live very closely together. So I'm gonna finish off the Irish segment here with a story about a Scotsman. 
this Scotsman happened to be Jewish and he lived in Scotland. He lived in Scotland all of his life and he was very wealthy, but he was retiring. And he decided that he wanted to join the famous St. Andrew's Golf Club. Well, all prospective members have to be interviewed by the uh, membership committee. So this fellow filled out his application and he submitted it and he went in this room and there were five guys sitting there and one of them, the chairman, started asking him questions. And he says, uh, so you're a Scotsman? He says, I am a Scotsman. He says, I've lived in Scotland all my life, had a business here, and now I'm ready to retire and I'd like to join St. Andrew's Golf Club. Well, I understand you're Jewish. He said, I am Jewish. I've been Jewish all my life too. He says, well, you know, being Jewish, uh, you have to be circumcised. Is that right? He said, aye, that's true. That's true, always Jewish. We're all circumcised. He says, well, you know, at our formal events here, we wear kilts, and under the kilts, we don't wear any underwear. He said, aye, I realize that. I told you, I've been a Scotsman all my life. I've been to many formal affairs. He says, well, you know, the members of the golf club here are a little concerned that in the event you're wearing a kilt without no underwear and the wind should blow up, we might see the end of your penis. And for that reason, you know, because of that concern, we're going to have to deny your application. He said, oh, so it's not because I'm Jewish. Oh, no, no, that would be discrimination. He said, you know, I've always known to walk in the Orangeman's Parade, you had to be Irish Protestant. And I always knew to join the Knights of Columbus, you had to be Irish Catholic. But up until this very moment, sirs, I had no idea that in order to be a member of St. Andrew's famous golf club, you had to be a complete prick. And I think he had a very good point. And I want to thank you again for watching Ralph's Sort of True Stories. And uh, you all head back real soon. But before you go, I want you to go down to the bottom. There's a little thumbs up thing you can click on. So you say you like us. And then go to the right. There's a little box that says subscribe. And then just to the right of that, there's a little bell you can hit and ring. It'll ring for you when we load a new video. So you can get right back to Ralph's Sort of True Stories. I want to thank you again for watching. Thank you.